Dubesar, you can start speaking. Okay. okay, so good evening, friends. Today we have selected a question answer from Krishji. Some, but I have circulated it, but I'll just read it out. Little longish, but I hope you'll bear with me. Somebody asked him, What do you, why do you waste your time preaching? instead of helping the world in a practical way. And Krishna replied, now what do you mean by practical? You mean bringing about a change in the world, a better economic adjustment, a better distribution of wealth, a better relationship, or to put it more brutally, helping you to find a better job. You want to see a change in this world, every intelligent man does. And you want a method to bring about that change. And therefore, you ask me why I waste my time preaching instead of doing something about it. Now, is what I'm actually doing a waste of time? It would be a waste of time, would it not, if I introduced a new set of ideas to replace the old ideology, the old pattern, Perhaps that is what you want me to do. But instead of pinpointing out a so-called practical way to act, you live to get a better job, to create a better world. Is it not important to find out what are the impediments which actually prevent a real revolution? Not a revolution of the left or the right, but a fundamental radical revolution, not based on ideas. Because ideals, beliefs, ideologies, dogmas, prevent action. There cannot be a word transformation, a revolution, as long as action is based on ideas, because action then is merely reaction. Therefore, ideas become much more important than action, and that is precisely what is taking place in the world, isn't it? To act, we must discover the impediments that prevent action. But most of us don't want to act. That is our difficulty. We prefer to discuss. We prefer to substitute one ideology for another. And so we escape from action through ideology. Surely that is very simple, is it not? The world at the present time is facing many problems. Overpopulation, starvation, division of people into nationalities and classes and so on. Why isn't there a group of people sitting together trying to solve the problems of nationalism? But if we try to become international while clinging to our nationality, we create another problem. And that is what most of us do. So you see that ideals are really preventing action. A statesman, an eminent authority has said, the world can be organized and all the people fed. Then why it is not done? because of conflicting ideas, beliefs, and nationalisms. Therefore, ideas are actually preventing the feeling of people, feeding of people. And most of us play with ideas and think we are tremendous revolutionaries, hypnotizing ourselves with such words as practical. What is important is to free ourselves from ideas, from nationalisms, from all religious beliefs and dogmas, so that we can act not according to a pattern or an ideology, but as needs demand. And surely to point out the hindrances and impediments that prevent such action is not a waste of time, is not a lot of hot air. What you are doing is obviously nonsense. Your ideas and beliefs, your political, economic, and religious panaceas are actually dividing people and leading to war. It is only when the mind is free of ideas and beliefs that it can act rightly. A man who is patriotic, nationalistic, can never know what it is to be brotherly, though he may talk about it. On the contrary, his actions economically and in every direction are conducive to war. So there can be right action and therefore radical, lasting transformation only when the mind is free of ideas, not too superficially, but fundamentally. And freedom from ideas can take place only through self-awareness and self-knowledge. It is very simple, is it not?
Yes, sir, sir, bhai. Please unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Are you able to hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dubeji. Good evening, friends. I am here in Chennai. And uh, once in a while, the plane goes above this building. So you may hear some noise, but that will be only for a minute or so. So uh, about this topic, whether Krishnaji was wasting time or was he doing the best he could do. And I feel that Krishnaji was well qualified to talk about the human mind because we do everything through our mind, whether we are working as an engineer or scientist or a lawyer. And uh, we use our mind to solve the problems which are generally created by the mind itself. So if we don't understand how our mind works, then no matter what, whatever we do, it will create more and more problems. And Krishnaji had a kind of a clarity he was able to see very, very clearly how the problems are coming into existence in human beings. And so he was talking about the source from where all the problems come. And uh, the source, according to Krishnaji, is in the ideology. And uh, the world is divided by nationalism, and religious belief and all that. And finally, it comes down to the me, I, ego, self. And so he was trying to point out that there is a different dimension within us, which is not thinking and feeling, but we can see clearly how our mind is working. And we, when we are able to see it clearly, then we can um, go right to the root of the problem, uh, whether it is our personal problem or the problem of society. Uh, and so Krishnaji had tremendous clarity and he thought that if he, he spoke about this, some few people may listen to him. And even to listen to him, one needs some kind of freedom to listen. Otherwise, uh, most people try to understand Krishnamurti and then they find it very difficult because the Krishnamurti cannot be understood. But if we are interested in looking at our own mind, then it becomes very lively when what Krishnaji says, it begins to make sense and then when we have looked at our own thinking and how the problems are coming in our daily life, and when we really go right to the root, then that is what all spiritual teachers like Raman Maharshi or Krishnaji or Kabir, they are saying that the problems are coming because we are not aware uh, this dimension of awareness and we are living in thinking and getting so much involved with me and my problem that we are not really uh, going uh, coming out and looking at it. so uh, only a, a person who is free from all this thinking and feeling coming out in the dimension of awareness can see clearly how the problems are coming into existence. And such a person can speak authentically to any human being, whether the person is a scholar or a scientist or professor. And so Krishnamurti had tremendous confidence in what he was saying because he had seen something which is not thinking and feeling. Okay, so I think Krishnaji was doing the best he was doing. He was not wasting time. But the contribution of Krishnamurti 
I would say that it may not change the humanity because very, very few people can really go right to the root of the source from where the problems are arising. But Krishnaji has done great thing for some sensitive people like me. When I begin to read, I could see from where he was speaking. So in my view, Krishnaji did a very, very good job and uh, he will be remembered for a long, long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwadai. Yes, Dineshji, please unmute yourself. Are you able to hear me, sir? Yes. First of all, let us review, uh, just for the sake of convenience, what JK has said. JK said that, I am not uh, repeating the question, but what JK has said, you want to see a change in the world and you want a method to bring about that change. Oh, no voice coming. Dineshji, there is some problem with your audio. Please unmute. You have got muted. Already I am unmuted. Are you able to hear me, sir? Now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, now we are clear. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay now. Okay. So, I will just repeat. I am not uh, repeating the question. But uh, I am uh, repeating what JK has uh, intended to say. You want to see a change in the world and you want a method to bring about that change. It would be a waste of time if I introduce a new set of ideas to replace the old technology or ideology. Sorry, ideology. Is it not important to find out what are the impediments which actually prevent the real revolution? Here he said that what are the real impediments? Not based on ideas, most of us don't want to act. We escape from action through ideology. He means to say here, as for me, we see a problem, we know the action, but we don't uh, act. We go for the ideas, which are conflicting belief, etc. Therefore, ideas are actually preventing uh, from the action. Say, for example, we know that uh, we are having surplus um, food and we can give uh, uh, feeding to the poor people, but we don't do that. We make ideologies and then uh, we, uh, we say that uh, this ideology will work and then according to these norms and all that, we will give the food to the people. So we have to free oneself from ideas, from uh, nationalism, from all religious beliefs and dogma so that we can act as per actual need, needs demand. And freedom from ideas can take place only through self-awareness and self-knowledge. Yes, what JK says is correct. And this is the actual solution. But this becomes a philosophy. Why? This becomes a philosophy. What is philosophy? Philosophy means a theory or attitude that acts as a guiding principle or study of the fundamental nature of the knowledge. The reality and existence so it is a it is a guiding principle so it is a guiding principle based on truth or some ideal condition in our case say the proper order of all things related to the requirement of the humanity in our case say the proper order for, of all things related to the requirement of humanity ideology is basically a system of ideas and and ideals which uh, makes the policy. This ideology is based on philosophy at the back and gives uh, goals, how society should uh, work or to be arranged and methods. The most appropriate ways to achieve the ideal arrangement. This covers the uh, practical aspects of life, do's and don'ts, SOP, etc. Act third, actual implementation of the policy. Now, what is the need of such ideologies? Basically, it is a practical observation of fact. In the past, that out of 100% people, 15% people are above average, good per persons who are having ethics, morals, etc. 15% people are above uh, average, 
but they are bad people this they are having ill intentions and they are having their philosophy is basically what i don't want you and if at all i want you then i want to uh, you for exploitation or for usage and remaining 70% are just followers remaining 70% are just followers neither they are having capacity nor they are interested in deep thinking etc as archer sir said they just follow the leaders so when the leaders are good we have got good management when uh, they are bad we have got the bad management considering this 70% we have to give ideologies so if we consider jk's proposal minimum 15% people should be transformed who can guide this 70% people this is the best we can expect in the present condition these are the my views thank you thank you thank you i think one has to start from the fact that generally the human mind is for all of us think from self centered view so what is beneficial to me i call it practical way of doing things and prashmuti has never propounded a theory that you have to change the mankind i don't think uh, that is our aim it should not be our aim to think that i am here to change others it should start from us i singular and that is where it should end if that change brings about a change anywhere where i am living in my surrounding it's okay it's a by product of my change but i think the the whole idea is that i should watch myself observe myself and see how i am acting in my daily life in my daily relationship whether i am guided by my self interest or i am taking the right action that right is under court that comes when there is a clarity about my own thinking that is what that is what krishmuti means he he is not saying that you create a society where everything you know is heavenly and that's not the purpose of krishmuti's teachings it starts and ends with us as individuals if individuals change there's a possibility that things around them can change and that change you can't set a goal that this is the way i want to be i want to become an ideal person and uh, i should be full of compassion i should be full of good will and all that let it happen the way it happens so i think this is the crux of what krishna has talked about and what we call practical is certainly not what krishna calls practical practical to us means something which serves my interest what have it got to do with you know in my interest whether it's fulfilling me or not whether it is something which i get in return or not that is what interests me it can be is it possible to look at that this is what this passage is all about i just wanted to add this yes anybody else yes durga ji Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Uh, good yes, evening. I, uh, uh, rather it's a very dry, I can say, and the very fundamental of Krishna is uh, text, one of the texts, and uh, uh, I think uh, when you when we read the text, uh, I think uh, I partially agree with uh, what uh, Dinesh has said. Uh, Krishna has uh, somebody asked him because uh, when we when we ask. somebody because that's what our world is uh, like you know if you have grown up like maybe we are in 20s or 30s you feel fundamental good should be like you know everybody should be happy everybody should be getting good jobs you know that that's the concept one has when uh, when maybe one comes across krishna because that's the world we know that's the world we are familiar with but uh, when we read krishna ji and uh, he states things you know like you know they are so Abo 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 average levels and uh, what he said is some some uh, somewhat like you know it's in the sky uh, and I think I think sir many people uh, this is my common knowledge sir uh, lot of people getting lost in the words and unable to unable to comprehend it 
and uh, and more than that you know i think uh, making it, this is philosophy uh, it's it's another kind of a theory uh, because that i i i see in my own family members who have been reading krishna ji uh, they feel they did not do anything you know it it leaves somebody people to it, it may lead people to go, go to that extent also uh, because uh, to know the right thinking and right action uh, i think we need to read in between the lines and uh, where uh, he mentions what does it mean by goodness and all those things sir uh, because uh, the the problems are definitely there because if one and one is not uh, self awareness and self knowledge that's what he comes you know he ends the uh, this whole passage then uh, first of all we don't even know what is self awareness what is self self knowledge is and then one wonders uh am i going to be am i going to start working in my life only after i achieve the self awareness self knowledge till that time what am i going to do so that leaves one one more question also sir so but life goes on and every day challenges are there every day the demands are there and we see all these things happening in our society all around us uh you know the so called uh, corruption or evil people getting hurt Uh, getting exploited you know very badly and and uh, and you feel uh, you don't know what to do i know you as a sensitive person you really get affected and uh, and when you read krishnati who says maybe self awareness self knowledge may well i need not do anything maybe that may lead uh, some people to that kind of an extent also sir but uh, it takes some kind of a maybe some maturity uh, i think sir like you know in little little actions also i need to start implementing all those things you know because for me uh, not able to go beyond uh, you know religions or uh, religions of course we may see we, because that's what we have been told from our uh, ancient scriptures at, at least hinduism never preaches that uh, you know uh, different religions or different uh, human he, he never preaches it, it speaks about human life so i don't know i never had this feeling that you know uh, god is uh, i yeah i do believe uh, believe in god I I never felt that you know Christian God is different, Muslim God is different. No, I never felt that way. Creator is one. That was the, I don't know. Maybe I give all my credit to my Hindu background. So I may be able to not um, not falling in the line of uh, you know religions or uh, maybe a little bit uh, more sensitive. So I may not be falling in the line you know line of you know caste and all those things. But not to be able to see the nationalities becoming a global citizen. Uh, of course, uh, the book says that. but at the same time sir if we see in our own society there are human beings they are they are not just bothered about these things they are touched by uh, some kind of a compassion in their hearts they are not bothered whom they are helping and how they are helping they just go out of the way and help other people and they, maybe they never ask these theological philosophical questions also so i feel sir krishna ji is teaching comes there sir it he gives the intellectual uh, information intellectual knowledge also at the same time but at the same time Uh, and he compels us prompts us to do put it put that in practice in every day day to day life also and so most of the time he tells teachers and you know other uh, people who come to him he says don't wait till the time you get uh, enlightenment you need to act now because the life is now your present is now you have to act now you can't make this a theology and other philosophy and put it in your head so i think definitely krishna ji is uh, teaching is not easy sir it's definitely challenging sir that's what i have seen in my whatever life i had been facing so definitely sir and he is more questions and maybe if we are with more questions i feel that's a better stage rather than just kept getting complacent because that is then we are wondering we are questioning that's what he compels us to do question go into it dig into it if you don't dig if you if you become complacent then that means you're not making progress you have to keep asking each and every question and not only those do uh, you know gray areas of good and bad even in our own nature we are so called good people but how many bad how many uh, kinds of you know wrong notions we must be carrying through the form of conditioning we we may look very polished sophisticated and civilized human beings but how many gray areas exist in our own mind is it easy for us to come out of all them also so maybe we need to keep working on us uh that's what uh, i want to say for the timing sir thank you thank you sir very i think it's, it's important to to see because easy to see that i am unaware 
I'll start from there, you know, that, you know, I was not clear aware, see how I'm looking at things. Because that's what we are most of the time. I remember in Rat a teacher, first he was talking about anger and he said, you should discuss it every day in the school and all that. And the teacher got up and said, sir, how can I talk about anger? Because I get angry myself so often. And he said, sir, that's the time when you should talk about anger. Because then you are you are totally aware what is happening inside you. So we have all kinds of negative emotions or disorder in our consciousness. But I think the moment you start seeing it without you know evaluation and measurement and all that, it has some effect. Some something happens inside us. So that is that is the way to look at it. And I think the easiest way to start would be where I am, because I can't start anywhere else. And I am, I get angry, I am all the time unaware. So I will start with that. I just wanted to add this to what Gurdaji said. Yes, Harshad Bhai. Yeah. Are you able to hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I think uh, our education is mostly about the world which is outside. And uh, everything becomes kind of a knowledge of, of the world, like physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, history, geography. It is all about the world which is outside. And so what is happening within our own mind, and we use our mind to study all those subjects, but when there is a anger arises or fear arises within us. Are we in touch and see that the anger is arising and ask a question like, what is this anger? What is behind? What is the mystery behind? Why I get angry? Is it possible not to feel angry or not to have conflict or loneliness or boredom or jealousy? When such questions become very important to a human being, then the, all our attention goes in looking inward. Otherwise, if you, even if you tell student, make a project on anger, they will go to library and get all the information about anger, what psychologists say, and everything they will put very beautiful quotations and the diagrams, and they make a project on anger, but if they don't observe anger when it is arising, then it is all theoretical. And all academic knowledge is mostly is about gathering information and putting it in proper order with some diagrams and the things that we have understood. So a teacher who is really passionate to look at the inner world, like Krishnamurti was, then he can make other people look at their own mind. And that is what Krishnaji was doing because he had looked very, very deeply into the human mind, his own mind, and he knew where the problems are arising. And so he was very passionate. So only when the teacher who is teaching even mathematics or physics or history, as such a teacher finds that learning about the inner world is much more important than gathering information about the outside world and all the various ideologies, then it becomes very lively. And then uh, Krishnamurti, what he says, seems very interesting, very true, uh, very obvious also. And then we don't even, when we are able to look at our own mind clearly, then we don't need to read Krishnamurti also. We can speak from our own direct observation. And But that is what is lacking in our education, that the teacher themselves, they get angry, they have fear of losing job, and so many problems. So they cannot speak to students. And they can only talk about their subject, whether it's a history or geography. So that is, uh, even in Krishnamurti schools, it is very, not many teachers 
are interested in what Krishnamurti is talking about. And so naturally, a student will not get what Krishnamurti is talking about. And then it becomes like ideology or philosophy, as the H.G. said, that everything becomes like a knowledge. Even Krishnamurti's teaching can become a knowledge, but it is useless, that knowledge, because one has needs freedom to look at oneself clearly, without thinking, direct seeing, and that is lacking in our education. Okay, I have finished. Thank you. Thank you. Just finish it. Yes, Mr. Dinesh Lakhmare. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sir, today's uh, our uh, discussion is basically whether any action should be uh, without uh, ideology or without any thought and based on the fact and based on the actual need. And another is, uh, right now what is happening? All the actions are based on the uh, ideologies. Suppose, basically this question is uh, related to your system. Suppose, uh, India has to be run. So, one has to make the constitution. Why? Because as Krishnamurti also said, that uh, you can know yourself only in the relationship. Now, what are the problems of the other? All the leaders cannot go to everybody and ask them and... Uh, another point is uh, they cannot uh, satisfy all the people all the time. So you have to go for a constitution. When when I am not uh, in touch with the say any person, still I have to take care of him. Then I have to go for a uh, constitution which takes care of them also, or what based on the my past experience. That's what uh, we have been doing, and that uh, the same thing has been uh, appearing in democracy. Uh, uh, democracy or say your communist uh, philosophy and all that. People are thinking and then they are trying to implement that thing. Now it is perfectly all right that what the JK says that actually the action should be based on the fact. How it has to happen, how these two things are to be uh, related or how these two things should be taken care of while taking any action. That's the point. Number two, Harshad sir has been uh, saying the things. Uh, I have got question to Harshad uh, sir. How many people are actually interested in this self-knowing and uh, self-awareness? This is the question to Harshad sir. Because uh, my experience, my personal experience is when, when we talk, uh, we try to talk to the person, they say we are not interested. We are only interested in uh, our bread and butter. We are only interested in our... Uh, uh, this uh, entertainment, pleasure, and all that. So, what are what you have to say? Both the things. Yeah. Um, a very few people can look at their own mind clearly. There is always, if there is any problem in relationship, uh, we think that the fault is with the other person. But a conflict involves two people. So when I have conflict with someone, it means that I am also particip participating in that. But if I am very clear, then that conflict it will not grow. Like uh, when Krishnaji was giving a talk, one person in the audience Ask Krishnaji, are you crazy? And Krishnaji said, okay, you are, you are asking whether the speaker is crazy. Let us find out what is craziness. And is the society really saying because there are so many problems? So a person who is very clear by any question, very this kind of question, a person who is intelligent will look at the question and not feel hurt. And that is our problem that we have so many images about ourselves that we are intelligent, 
we are good looking and then somebody says no you are stupid then we get immediately become angry and if we get angry and start fighting with that person it means that we are not intelligent otherwise there is no need to fight unnecessary by just somebody saying something some words yeah if somebody is eating physically then we have to protect ourselves but we protect our ego because we have this ego and it needs protection and uh, then it creates another there is another ego in the other human being and then there is a clash so even sometimes like a person like lata mangeshkar and pandit ravi shankar they work together for one film gave very beautiful music but they never came again together to give a very good music because they both had certain ego ravi shankar pandit ravi shankar and lata mangeshkar you know so even this people who are well uh, educated and intelligent or talented that the sense of me i i am very important it exists and as long as it exists then there will be conflict there will be problem in relationship and uh, when a person who is really sensitive and when he feels hurt then instead of finding fault with the other person a person should ask why do i feel hurt what is it if somebody is saying something and it is hurting me it means that there is some truth in what the other person is saying if i am very clear then i i can say uh, if it is true i can say thank you and if it is not true i can say sorry it is not true so that kind of clear self knowledge clarity when if we don't have then there will be problems in the family in the office and uh, everywhere we among friends relatives so the humanity is suffering because of that sense of i or me so sorry there is a noise going on okay so uh, the real challenge is to look inward and be free from the problems which we are suffering from because of this ego and then maybe we can speak about it clearly and even if somebody criticizes us it it doesn't make us feel hurt you know so all these great people like mirabai or kabir they had suffered a lot from the society but they were very clear and so they were very creative ram krishna and all krishna murti and all that people who are very clear uh, people will try to hurt them the society uh, uh, is not very kind to them because they are threat to the society the immorality of the society and these people they have certain strength and they speak from that strength so they are not like even buddha even the brahmins they were they did not like buddha because buddha was doing something uh, very good work so uh, one needs aloneness and clarity to face the, the world uh, the way it is and then we can maybe do little bit uh, good work in society but if we are the part of the immorality of the society if we are just following corruption and fear and jealousy then we cannot do anything for society so real freedom is required to do some good work and even that very few people may understand okay i have finished thank you prashad bhai i think dinesh ji asked you because he said he has not found many people who are interested in you know self knowledge and all that and he said he asked you whether why people are not interested in this because he 
uh, how many people are really interested in looking at themselves and you know to 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 know to get the into self knowledge yeah. that was yeah. his question yeah yeah there are, there have been few people uh, even in childhood like nachiketa was interested in what is beyond death he was only a little boy and drew and pralad and so many shankaracharya at a young age vivekanand and ramkrishna so many people in this country uh, they had got something uh, at, from the childhood and so but that percentage wise it may be uh, 1% of 1% uh, such one in a million maybe you know maybe really deep interest thank you thank you thank you i think dinesh ji uh, you have rightly said there are not many people who are interested in this but knowing the fact that even one per person can be liberated or he can become free gives us hope that is possible for the human being to reach that stage so i think it it should be left to the individual effort rather than a collective effort or you know there are so many people working on it Christy himself is on record saying that people who had been with him for more than forty years, none of them could understand what he's talking about. So, being close to somebody or to read about somebody doesn't make you free. That freedom will come if there is an inner voice calling you to look into yourself. That is important. And uh, there was a Krishnamurti or there was a Ramana Maharshi and the Sardar Maharaj. proves that it's possible for human beings to become free yes durga ji and then dr pradeep verma ah uh, yes sir <laughs> ah, i i hope we only few people are monopolizing it sir i good to see verma ji <laughs> <laughs> participating i think yes. uh, more participation participation is also you know it's uh, most welcome uh, because we have been uh, into this discussions uh, for so long and we are all all been together in this yes sir i think i agree with what uh, harsha sir is saying uh, i think there is nothing called you know one long step at one time <laughs> in one big jump it's always you know the small small things that matter uh, you know i think that all, it, it also requires some kind of a maybe maturity maybe sir uh, because a lot of people think you know uh, rather than get uh, beating your head again is self knowledge self awareness if i don't do that <laughs> and freedom uh, because uh, Uh, if you keep on thinking only all those things, and you are going to miss the bus, your action is right now. Right now, you are in the, in this life, and you are in relationship. You are in action. So whatever the understanding is there, uh, whatever that uh, comes to you, I think Krishna Ji also says, begin where you are. Uh, if you keep all those targets of uh, you know you know mind, you know observe is observed. What is this self knowledge? I think uh, I th I think there is no end to that. If only in action, only in sm doing small, small steps, and uh, he also suggested there are a lot of other things also needed. Bit of uh, aloneness, bit of uh, Krishna ji also emphasizes so many points. It's not that he hasn't given any th any practical hints. He said, take out time for yourself, spend time with nature, sensitivities. Oh, so many hints he has also given. It is not that he only set that goal in the sky and he he asks people to go there. No, no. I feel he has given lot of hints also. If one has been reading Krishna Ji for many years, all these hints we get get to know. So begin uh, understanding them, doing your small small steps. Uh, begin from where you are. I feel that all goes a long way, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. I think Durga Ji with children he was more clear. You know, he used to tell them that close yes. your eyes, sit erect. watch your eyes don't move your pupil and all that so i mean he he gave as you rightly said he gave lots of hints to everybody that this is the way you to go about yes sir yes sir and uh, the best book i still even now i like is the the beginnings of learning sir where he spoke uh, most of his uh, you know speeches and dialogues all with the students and there when he was when he discusses them when he discusses them with girls you know is about he asks about the pregnancy He says, if you are going to go with the boyfriends, and if you want to have a relationship with them, what will you do if if you become pregnant? That means that's a very practical, fundamental question he asks. He brings everybody to present uh, questions, present practicality. Use your common sense, and you have to plan. You have to think like that because you're not 
a senseless creature. You, you are gifted with some intelligence. You have to have some practical sense. Unless and until we don't have them, we can't make a big jump there. So when he talks to them, a lot of clarity comes to us also. Wait, is he pointing out, pointing at? Wait, does the focus lies in? That is understanding of practical aspects of life, applying our mind there, then only maybe slowly, slowly clarity starts setting itself. That's all I would say, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Pradeep Ji, please. Am I audible, sir? <coughs> yes, audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Um, Harshad Bhai has uh, very clearly talked about that all our actions are based on the working of the mind. That is capable of creating heaven and the hell, and also a balanced, sustainable life. The questioner has a specific idea about being practical. The questioner has a specific idea about being practical. He took him his talks, his discourses as preaching and not as teaching, because JK was ordained to be a world teacher. And throughout his life, he was a teacher, verbally or non-verbally. If he could see the life of JK, how he lived, then he would not ask this question. So, practical, he has a different thinking about being practical. Weapon industry and nuclear arsenal can practically wipe off. I'm using practically knowingly. It can practically wipe off everything that has been created practically in the name of human welfare and comfort. Why nature is revolting, dismantling most of the man-made structures ruthlessly. Can we see the turbulence and emotion in basic elements of life around us? Yes, we do see and put the blame on something, someone other than us. So that is one thing. Uh, Rashid Bhai and, and, uh, talked about invariably Harshad Ji somehow puts feeling and thinking separately as if they are something some, it belongs to the same mind. Seeing and thinking, seeing, thinking and feeling may not be happening in the same moment, but all these things are important to get a clear understanding of what is. I very forcefully say feelings and thinking all are important. You see, am I now, Dinesh, she talked about Dinesh and even Harshad Ji, endorsed his views that very few people are interested in, very few people are interested in uh, these things which they are, he talked about. Am I interested in self-knowing? This is the only question. Am I interested? Whether the other person, the so-called other in me is thinking about it or not, it hardly matters. If I can understand myself, then I will know clearly why the others are not able to think this way. How the others are not able to see the way it should be. So my, the more I am with myself, it will, it will clarify why others in certain conditions are not able to think on these lines. So everything is important, feeling, thinking, sensitivity, full sensitivity. When he talks about we have to be sensitive, what does it mean? All the senses working harmoniously together. So that is what he talked about. We can't uh, remove these things. We can't separate out pregnant uh, feelings out of it. Feeling is a very important thing. When he, uh, Harshad Bhai talks about Meera, she didn't have feeling for Krishna alone. Krishna alone. Then Nisargadatta, of course, is there. Raban Maharshi or only talked about who am I? Who am I? So it comes back to myself only. So if I know myself properly, honestly, passionately, then I'll know what is why, what is happening, and why. 
around me, in, in my family, in my friend circle. Everything will be uh, clear to us. Thank you very much. This is all I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> May I make a comment? Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, what happens that when we go to school, college, university, we learn language, we learn how to speak, and then our thinking it becomes very mechanical, uh, automatic, very fast. And uh, we become very, very good in uh, talking, thinking, but it is mostly going round and round in the plane of thinking and feeling. So, so we are occupied, our mind remains occupied with something or the other. And so only a person when he comes out from this plane of thinking and feeling in the third dimension called awareness, then through that awareness, whatever is thinking and feeling can be seen very, very clearly. But if we are only on the plane of thinking and feeling, we cannot see the whole of it and we go round and round and our energy is wasted. Uh, and we don't understand from where these problems are arising, whether fear, anger, or loneliness, and all that. Mm -hmm. So only in freedom, we can see very clearly. And uh, that is very rare. You know, uh, Pradeep Ji talked about thinking and seeing. So seeing is in a different dimension than thinking. And that's why Krishnaji asks many times, how do you look at a tree or the face of a friend? So he is trying to say that there is a different way of looking or seeing, which is not through the knowledge which we have gathered uh, about. And uh, also to one artist, Krishnaji said, the word parrot has blocked you from looking at the thing which flies. So only when we are able to see the thing, not the parrot, but the bird, which not even the word bird, but that thing which flies, if we can see it, even once we are able to do it, then we know that there is a different way of looking. And that looking can also look at the problems which are arising within our own mind. And generally we try to escape from our own problem when, and we ask some guru or a psychologist or a priest, or we try to read what experts have said, instead of trying to really look and not escape from our own. So as long as we are escaping, we cannot come in direct touch with ourselves. And this escaping is through film, music, whatever it is, uh, reading books, gathering a lot of knowledge, but it doesn't solve the problem. Even the knowledge of Krishnamurti teachings can prevent in looking at ourselves directly. Because I think most people are just gathering the knowledge of Krishnamurti's teaching, but instead of reading too much, if we can really look inside, then just a one book of Krishnamurti, like commentaries on living, may be enough. And then we don't need to pile up too much of Krishnamurti or what David Bohm or other people have said. So this is what I feel that it is really wonderful to look and uh, that if we know how to look, then our mind becomes our greatest friend. 
and then whether we are walking or traveling or talking, this looking becomes effortless and it tells us everything about ourselves. So psychologists will not know about ourselves because thinking is very, very dynamic. At one moment, we are thinking one thing and suddenly it jumps and goes into some other direction. So only when we are looking clearly, we know that the mind has jumped from one subject to the other subject. So this looking is, um, it's like a video going on. Instead of watching video of Krishnamurti, if we can watch the video, which is going on within us without gathering knowledge about our own self and just looking, it's a wonderful so what is that is what is called meditation looking seeing clearly at our own mind okay i will finish. thank you thank you yes dinesh ji uh, sir uh, there was a point uh, which pradeep ji has raised about feelings and emotions and thinking i would like to share my uh, one of my insight on this when we are in relationship with the other, when we are talking uh, to somebody or uh, we are having any trans such transaction, what happens? Suppose I am saying one thing, according, um, which according to me is correct. So th my thought, uh, what thought is saying, there you are speaking that your truth for the moment. This whatever my understanding is, that, that's what I am speaking. But it is accompanying with the react with the it is accompanying with the feeling or emotions which are not uh, uh, synchronized with the thought suppose i am speaking a positive thought or i'm uh, uh, in uh, uh, correct as far as my um, uh, this thing understanding goes then the feeling uh, the feeling and emotion should be parallel to it no it should be um, it should also represent well being or it should also uh, uh, show my order inside or whatever it is. But what happens, what is happening uh, in such cases, when you are speaking, the others, you are also observing the others and if he is not uh, agreeing with you. So you, you just uh, look at him, see, you see him and he gives some reaction and that reaction you pick up and accordingly your emotions and feelings are processed. We say anger or say uh, any feeling. Uh, irritation, say for example, ir irritation. So why why this is so? It means both are uh, involved in it. So basically, what happens? Uh, we have to also check when uh, self knowing uh, in self knowing that whether you are uh, whatever you are speaking with that what what emotion or feeling you are processing, are they opposite or they are synchronous with your thinking? What uh, Harshad sir and uh, Dubey sir has to say on this? Let me let me ex express my viewpoint. Then Harshad Bhai can add. <clears throat> what you are saying is is actually what happens. That's the reality. But I'm just I'm not saying that I can do it or anything. Uh, but let's talk of a different dimension. When I say something, and in response I receive a you know an answer or something. Which is not to my liking, which is contrad which contradicts my statement, or say is, is something which is not very pleasing to me. There is a registration, right? It registers in my brain, and with that registration, psychologically, you know, it the brain processes it, and there are emotions, and then anger comes or displeasure comes. Because I'm too much attached to my view. I feel that what I'm saying is correct from my point of view. So I'm suggesting two ways. Can I hold my view very tentatively? Then I can listen to the other person's view. And in that case, I, I really don't know whether we can stop that registration because it's, all, it's a biological process. I don't know whether the conscious mind can stop it. But if I'm not holding my view very strongly, 
that registration will happen, but will give me space to act. And in that space, I can examine what he's saying. And as Harshad Bhai just mentioned, in that examination, I may find that what he's saying is correct, then I change myself, or if it is not, I'll discard it without getting angry or getting upset. So it's it's very important that whatever view we have, because we are all conditioned, this is a fact. But if I'm not too much attached, I'm not holding my view very tightly, then I can listen to the other person. Doesn't matter how unpleasing it is. So that is very, very important. Sarsha Bhai can add to it. Unmute, unmute yourself. Unmute. Sarsha Bhai, unmute. Yeah. Uh... As long as we are not free, freedom, it means uh, in the state of awareness, which is different than thinking and feeling. Because I consider thinking and feeling, they are very much related. Thinking can cause feeling and feeling can cause thinking. They are in the same place. But looking at it, that is in a different state. And as long as these are not seen clearly, thinking and feeling, then they will multiply and create more and more problems, more and more disturbance. So, like sometimes I say that we go round and round like, a rat trying to catch its own tail and goes round and round and then somebody touches the rat and the rat moves straight and escapes. So as long as that kind of touching which is not thinking and feeling, if such a touching has not happened in our life, then we will go round and round and blaming other people for our problems. But the right attitude is that if I have a problem, whether it is anger or fear or jealousy, I have to look at it. And to look again, it requires the freedom. So uh, it's freedom is at the beginning, as Krishna says. But it can come when a person is very, very curious, curious to look inward and not getting frightened of seeing something disturbing inside. And uh, like as we have some physical problem, we immediately go to doctor to get a painkiller. Similarly, I think in psychological field also, people immediately go to a guru or a psychologist or read books or try to find answers. But uh, if we don't try to find answers in words, of other people and we just keep on looking at it, there is clarity comes. That is what I feel that this seeing is in a different dimension than thinking and feeling. Okay, I have finished. I also want to add to what Harshad Bhai said that this thinking and feeling is one movement. It's, mm -hmm. it's not different movement. But seeing or looking, observation as Kishri calls, that's a different movement. Absolutely different movement. What yes. I would like to I, I yeah. would like to add something. Uh, yes. What I would like to say, of course, uh, uh, this um, uh, your uh, idea and feelings and emotions is a single movement. But uh, what is the quality of feelings and um, uh, emotions you are processing with the uh, intellectual uh, thought? That's what I am asking. That that is important. It's the intellectual thought itself which is creating the th feeling and, and thinking, is it not? What else? If I'm not intelligent yeah, yeah. sound, how will that feeling or, or emotion come? No, no. Uh, see, whatever Harshan sir said, uh, looking is a, uh, is a fine. You have to look uh, at it and then only it will go and uh, it's in the another dimension. That is okay. But what we have to see? We have to see whether they are synchronized or not. Feelings and uh, emotions are synchronized mm -hmm. with the, your intellectual thought or not. I think I am clear uh, if uh, it is not. 
Okay. Say now. Yes, I think we'll go to Pradeep ji. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Audible, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. So, yeah. so when the syringe is there or not? That. Hello? Yes, please. Go ahead. So, what I see now, my 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 these views may not be taken as a reaction to what I said. By said, not a reaction at all. You see, by for striking a point to make a point important, say, seeing what we are imagining, a person who is who is not seeing at all. Who is only thinking and mm -hmm. thinking he is a neurotic. You see, the person who is engaged in absolutely in, in his mind, in the cluttered mind, then he's a neurotic. But by far, most of the people are, they do see. I have yet to find a person who doesn't see at all. And when you see, you don't think. Be very careful about this. When you see, you cannot think. So this thing goes alternately or parallelly or simultaneously all the time in us. You see, seeing, feeling, thinking, it goes well with these waves are there. So when you, everybody sees something and then, then thinks about it, seeing is, of course, impersonal in a, uh, in a way, which becomes personal mm -hmm. later on. So... Otherwise, what is the basis of compassion? What is the basis of compassion, if not the feeling? What happens in awareness, if not the feeling? You see, it is such a sensitive, delicate mechanism the man has been endowed with. But we go on emphasizing on something out of this, either this or that or that, as if these are eccentric. To me, these are eccentric views. When we are emphasizing only, a, of course, seeing is there. When seeing is there, thinking cannot be there. Then compassion, the co-presence is there. Otherwise, how can, if you are listening to me, there is a transcendence. At that time, I'm neither thinking, not seeing. I'm just listening to you. So this is what I feel. These things, because to strike a point, we we somehow ignore certain very important delicate points, which that's why the holistic view of vision doesn't doesn't come to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Varma. Pradeep, I think in Kashmuti literature or the way Krishna talked about seeing to him was something which is not creating any knowledge. It's not creating any memory. That's the way we talked about seeing. I just wanted to say this much. Yes, Mr. Rajendran. <coughs> Please unmute. Uh, th thank you, Dweji. Uh, good evening to all. <coughs> so we have been uh, talking about action. But uh, throughout our life, we are, we are uh, just uh, men of action. Always we act. <laughs> But uh, always try to become somebody to change from what is to what should be based upon an idea, idealistic. So we, do, we don't remain with uh, that is our, so our action is always based on some ideas. We don't accept what is, we want to become something, we want to change throughout our life for 60, 70 years. We always try to become something or change from uh, anger to no anger, violence to non-violence. This is the struggle we are making for all the 60, 70 years. But did we ever change? Finally, one fine morning, we just uh, give it up. So, is, is there any... So, so the what is, the fact is what is, the what is is also the result of our, the observer. So, again, the observer... Does not uh, does not owe any responsibility of what is he wanted to he expected something and something has happened he wanted to improve upon it he does not own any responsibility so he wanted to modify it to change it and oh, the, the, again uh, 
that we are always, the only action we are doing is only escape throughout the world, throughout our lifetime. We are just uh, doing only escape only, escape from what is. So, all our, in the psychological field, is there any, is there any room for action? Only, why, why, is there any room for effort? The effort is the observer. The actor is also the observer. The what is is also the uh, uh, result of uh, some ideas, conclusion, and uh, 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 decision and action. That is what is. So other than that, in the psychological field, is there any uh, is there any action? Is there any room for any action? Or no action is the right action? I don't know. Thank you. I think we can close here and I'll announce the talk next Sunday. Next Sunday we have Dr. Richa Sharma and she's going to talk to us on the idea of social responsibility in Krishnamurti's philosophy. So this will be Sunday at 11 a.m. We shall free. Please do join us. And uh, with this, I think I close. Thank you all. Good night.